opinions of the individuals during this broadcast are their own and may not be the opinions of their group or other organizations they may be involved with. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. Open your Welcome to Open Your Eye on this, the second Tuesday in June in 2021. And of course, I am joined by my awesome joint host, as always, Miss Cindy Howell. How's it going? How today, Cindy? I'm doing very well today, Kim. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm doing all right. I'm thankful for my joint host today. Um, I'm extremely, <laughs> extremely thankful for my joint host today. I'll let y'all in on a little uh, tech problem that I had today. What's new in the zoo? Tech is happening with Kim Cooper. Imagine that. Um, I, I showed up at my uh, house that we are moving from. We were, of course, in the middle of a move. And I came back here to use the internet and my computer, which I left set up here in order to do our broadcasts. And lo and behold, my computer would not turn on. Um, it's been left alone for two weeks and it come back and it just simply will not work. So I am here on my phone using a phone app that I'm not capable of running anything. So the lovely Cindy took over running the board today. She's Yay. the main person in charge today. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that uh, that I, I, I was able to show you how to do everything and send you all the files in advance. <laughs> it's like, well, we got you trained for reefer reporters, so you might as well have these files too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, take it all just in case. <laughs> and look at that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, uh, you grabbed the brains and uh, picked up the ball there for us, and I really, really appreciate it. You've... Uh, really stepped up to the mat with no your emphasis here at Pace Radio with uh, you know, a couple of your shows. So yeah. it's a fantastic addition to the network and to my team in particular. So I'm extremely happy about that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and today we are going to have a little discussion on a new story that Miss Cindy found for us today, which is quite interesting. Psychedelic drug boom in mental health treatment comes closer to reality. I mean, this is mainstream media. This is CN, what is that, CNN? CNBC, so it's NBC, yeah. Wow, there yeah. we go. Interesting yeah. stuff going on. It is, uh, it is. it's really exciting. As we go down here, we get a beautiful picture of, uh, I believe these are some golden teachers that are growing here. Um, absolutely gorgeous. Um, entrepreneur Dick Simon uh, has never um, shied away from speaking up about business topics with other CEOs might find um, too stigmatized to touch. He has spent years dedicated to improving U.S. business relations with Iran. And more recently, the Boston-based CEO has embraced other another passion, improving the market for um, and medical uh, communities understanding um, of how psychedelic drugs can be used to treat mental illnesses. Um, and I've, I've been treating a mental illness, uh, PTSD, for about two and a half years now with Golden Teachers, actually. Um, uh, and 
and uh, um, it, it's it's nice to see business people get in on this, uh, and you know, people that might have been on the outside. He has spent years dedicated to improving. Um, I already read that one. It's an emerging an emerging health issue uh, that Simon came to appreciate through the firsthand frustration of watching people in his life suffering, uh, not just from mental illnesses, uh, but from the failure of existing and costly medical treatments. Um, drugs long stigmatized, such as psilocybin and MDMA, are rising in profile as a mental illness treatment options. Um, just last week, results from a phase three trial of MDMA combined with uh, talk therapy for PTSD showed results that were impressive. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's grown by leaps and bounds. The acceptance overall is happening at, happening at a very accelerated rate. Um, it's been sort of uh, looked at and, and and played around with and discussed on lower levels um, privately for many years. But it seems in the last, you know, 24 months or so, it's really, really come to the forefront of conversation everywhere. Absolutely. I mean, like, it, uh, the fact that I can be like, I, 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 when I talk to my dad about some things, one, like this is one of those things, I I still feel, you know, sometimes like a teenager talking to him and, and magic yeah. mushrooms, silly Simon, Ibogaine, ayahuasca, they still, you know, if I go to have a chat with my dad, I don't really feel like a 50 year old woman. I feel like a 15 year old kid. Um, and my father is coming to me with questions about this stuff. Like he's picking up on the, on it all and coming to me. And like, that's really kind of cool. Cause my, my father is the type of person that, I mean, he grew up back in the day where they, like, I mean, he, he, he's known nothing, but like this stuff is bad. That's what he's been yeah. taught his whole life. Um, yeah. So yeah, for him to, him, for him to get interested and bring it to me is huge. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's that's the set that we are seeing the most advancement and the most curiosity from with many avenues of natural medicine, not just psychedelics. We see it with cannabis and, and gravitating more towards a natural lifestyle, going back to growing their food like they did when they were younger and stopping using the grocery stores. Um, all of that is coming into play with our senior set. Absolutely. And, and farmers markets are becoming huge again. Uh, those that those that can't grow or live in apartments. <coughs> excuse me. I'm finding that they're um, I've been to two farmers markets so far this year. And compared to the last, say, five or 10 years, the boom this year was huge. And yeah. everybody was going for the fruits and vegetables. And it was really kind of neat, neat to see. Um, uh, uh, Eleanor, Eleanor Piros uh, says, uh, this is a pivotal event, um, and this person is a biotech analyst at Roth Capital Partners, um, who covers the emerging uh, alternative uh, mental health treatment space. Um, it may not seem, um, you know, harmonious, but it is one of the best and most rigorous executed trials in the space. And the results... Um, you know, corroborate what we have seen time and time again from smaller studies over the past two decades, he has said, referencing remission rates doubled that of a placebo. Um, so using psychedelics doubles uh, what the placebo was giving, and that's amazing. Um, the magical experiences kept showing up, but no one had the courage to take it through to the regulators. Um, uh, the results of the MDMA study, um, uh, you know, whose senior author is Rick Do Dobbin, and they're talking about MAPS, of course, uh, founder and executive director of the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, MAPS, um, are expected to be published in the Journal um, of Natural Medicine on Monday. Uh, the FDA approval could come as early as 2023, according to the New York Times. Wow. Wow. Yeah. We're out of the corner. I mean, it's 2021. Yeah right now um, yeah so, i mean that's around the corner you know we've we've made leaps and bounds here in canada as well section 56s were basically flying off the shelf other news stories uh recently out say health canada has halted uh it put such uh, handing out section 56 exemptions without uh without any notice as to why so i'm still looking in to try and find out more about that that's sort of an interesting revelation here but seeing things happen south of the border after Canada gets started and then south of the border surpassing us in that avenue seems to happen on a regular basis. Yes, 
Yes. Um, if we go down a bit further, a focus on depression treatment outcomes. Um, there are examples of stigmatized drugs and FDA approved uh, medicinal usage, including ketamine as um, an anesthesia since the 1970s and ultimately used on off as an off label basis to treat depression uh, based on the existing FDA authorization. Um, in 2019, a Johnson & Johnson ketamine-derived treatment for drug-resistant depression uh, was the first new approach for the mental health condition, specifically approved, again, by the FDA in decades. I mean, this is really exciting. They're, they're, taking, um, they're, they're, they're taking psychedelics and some older psychedelics that they've used as an anesthetic, uh, such, as, such as ketamine, and they're, they're creating, they're, they're realizing that this stuff can help to treat PTSD and depression. I mean, this can save thousands of lives. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely it can. And, you know, having this new gravitation towards natural medicines and deriving, you know, a, a standardized medicine even off of natural medicines, that's exciting doors for a lot of people that suffer from a lot of various conditions. Yeah, I'm, I'm really exciting. The, the, it, the story continues to say the current treatment approach of helping people to live with depression and PTSD you know, and on medication creates a patient population and cost factor that is a burden on the healthcare system. Um, and this may ultimately help the new drug companies gain acceptance for the clinical trials, um, you know, that are based around the, the psychedelics. Um, and hopefully that the clinical trial results continue to be positive. Um, this is really exciting stuff. Uh, the, it's, it's quite a, a lengthy um, article. Um, I you know, I've, I've skimmed through it before we before we got on air, um, and I'm I'm really excited to see this happening down in the United States. Uh, it's Brilliant. it's it's going to come along hand in hand with what's happening up here in Canada. I didn't know that they were halting the Section 56s. That's quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it really is. It's um, scary, interesting. Uh, wondering what's going on with Canada for sure. Um, dropping the ball as far as I can see, but. That's nothing new for Canada, right? No, I was going to say something similar like this happened with cannabis in the whole process, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, you know, I, I remember um, my uh, my old doctor, I mean, like he, he had no issue signing cannabis prescriptions and uh, probably about five years before legalization, like, I mean, he got harassed so bad that he, even now uh, it being legal and whatnot, he will not sign a prescription. Yeah. Yeah. And we see that across the board. Um, so I'm not, I'm not surprised by Health Canada's move um, because they've done it in the past. But I'm curious as to what uh, they're going to come out with for for their reasoning behind it. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. That's a very interesting article. I encourage people to go and have a look. 100% uh, psychedelic therapy. It's making mainstream media news. And look at those wonderful mushrooms. Aren't they gorgeous? Aren't they beautiful? They are beautiful. They are just simply gorgeous. Psilocybin therapy, people. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a, such a wonderful benefit to our health, and it can eliminate even more pharmaceuticals, which is what we're after. Let's get the plant-based stuff. And today's guest knows a hell of a lot about that. She does. Um, uh, today's guest... Two and a half years ago when I wanted to, um, well, th about three years ago when I wanted to start learning about uh, uh, microdosing uh, with, with psilocybin, I had reached out to a number of people here in Nova Scotia. Everybody was terrified to talk about it. Um, kind of reminded me of like 20 years ago with cannabis when people were asking questions and everybody was like, hush, hush. Oh, we have to go meet in the corner behind behind the behind the building, you know, and make sure we're, nobody can see us. I mean, that's, that's kind of how I felt. And our guest... Um, uh, who lives out west she stepped up and she said you know cindy i make caps and she goes if you really want to try this i can help you um and uh i thought that was absolutely fantastic so that was the beginnings of of my of my um using um microdosing to help fight my depression was with the help of our guest today and that's awesome what a yeah. fabulous connection and now here we are on this marvelous show um exploring new adventures and new aspects on psychedelic therapy and opening doors for others to learn with us as we go along. So it just seems only fitting that we bring in the one and only 
Sita Von Wilhelm. Hello, Sita. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. And how are you guys today? Doing good. Doing really good. awesome. Yeah, doing great. I actually had um, a, a, a macro dose over the weekend. And I did a little bit of a reset over the weekend with a big giant bonfire out in my farmer's field in the middle of nowhere in the pitch black with no power. And uh, I just, I had a fantastic night with a huge bonfire and I felt like a million bucks for the rest of the week ever since. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Big ass smile on my face. You can't get rid of it. So what, what do you what do you consider uh, uh, what, what what dose did you say you took a I, I actually did a, um, this time around it was a, a, I was doing a sample of a product uh, for somebody that has come to market with a product and they asked my opinion on the product and so I asked them what their uh, their dosage of it was. So on that particular one, it was a combination of a variety of three different types of shrooms that were put into an edible bar. Um, so about what I ate would be about the equivalent of about three and a half grams, but they were various doses. Okay. Well, that's, that's quite a dose, three and a half grams. Yeah, it was about three and a half grams per bar, and I ate a bar. And they were various dose levels. So there was some, you know, some harder hitting ones, some penis envy in there, but there was also the more um, enlightening ones like uh, uh, Golden Teachers were also part of the, the mix. So it was, uh, it was a very interesting evening. <laughs> <laughs> so see that you, you make um, a few products. What got you into what led you to making the this like the the caps? I, I know I've asked you this personally, and you've told me, but um, I, I always find it so interesting to to listen to your stories. Uh, what got you into making these caps and microdosing and and such? So I've been working with a friend for about twelve years who helps me with my my uh, when my garden's finished to help me with the trimming because my my hands tend to hurt, and he's been helping me for a long time. And he has been making um, caps for, I don't know, 20 years. He's a chef. So he's very, very particular about his measurements. And he, he started making these caps. Um, well, years and years ago, he was making um, cannabis caps. And then he started making these mushroom caps. And he's always sharing his, his perspective. And he's, he's kind of a, a, sing, you know, a single guy, very single uh, not very social. He likes riding his bike. He likes going out in nature, but he, he doesn't like hanging out in bars and stuff like that. So, um, so he, he's, and he's always been into, since he was, was a teenager, been into psychedelics and things. So, so we have a lot of discussions and somehow, not sure what his background is, but somehow he started doing these mushroom caps. And he just brought me a few and said, you got to try these. These are really good for, for, anti-anxiety and anti-depression. So I said, thank you very much. And I put them in my drawer. And then, <laughs> and as I, I see, I see clients here um, all the time. I, I do, um, I do consults all the time and people come with different things. And, and I never say this is going to work. I always say, I always make suggestions. This might work and this might work. And if that doesn't work, we'll try this. So usually they come back a couple of times. So I just started with these these caps, and um, I had one family come back, and the 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 wife is a she's a high powered businesswoman in politics, and apparently she's quite rough on the family at home. Out in public she's really nice, but at home she's just really hard to take. And they started giving these to her, telling her vitamins. And so I got this. She's so much nicer when she has the caps. <coughs> the thing their 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 family member and and telling them it was vitamins. Yeah. So, but those kind of things are irrefutable. That you you know you give somebody, and this is a microdose. This is twenty five milligrams. This is. This is one fiftieth or one fortieth of a recreational 
a small recreational dose. So right. you don't, you do not get high for sure. Right. You don't feel a thing. So, but it does give you a sense of brightness and um, <clears throat> and um, ease. And you see things, it's almost like you see things not clearer, but more brightly. Right. Yep. And, and then I, I tried taking them myself, and I, I like the way they feel. I make some with caffeine, uh, natural caffeine, green tea, and cola nut and guarana. And those are really nice if you need to get through, like, an extra bit of boom to get through your work through the day. So really, it's not an experience, per se, but it just makes you feel good. Yep. That's the thing about microdosing, though, right? And that's the thing that we really uh, are trying to push. Um, great example, there's the cat. Um, you know, it's not about getting high. It's Absolutely about, not. I might feel doing a macrodose, well, that's about getting high. But when you're doing your microdoses, no, you're not supposed to get high. You're supposed to get just, just below that threshold. Yep. Yeah. Tune, yep. I call it tuning. It just tunes you a bit. And yeah. actually, I did microdoses more than 20 years ago because, again, I, we were discussing my, my food peculiarities. Alcohol is another one. I, I can't drink more than one glass of wine. It just doesn't, doesn't agree with me. I get a headache. I, I get a hangover before I ever feel any effect of the alcohol. So. Oh. So right. alcohol is not a good thing for me. And when I used to go out and, and dance and, and hang out with friends at, at, at clubs and, and listen to music, everybody was drinking and I couldn't. So I discovered if I used to make uh, mushroom chocolates, if I shaved off a tiny chunk of the mushroom chocolate, I would feel really good and not need any alcohol. And it would help keep me awake too at night. So I always had a fabulous time when I went out. See, that's so cool. Um, you know, and we're finding more and more people as we do this show that have been using psychedelics as a medicine, basically. The same as, you know, back in the beginning with cannabis. You know, a lot of us were thinking we were using it recreationally. But when you come down to it, it turns out there is a medical reason there when you figure that out. And it seems it's the same with, with psychedelics that we've used over the years. Well, I've been, I've been using herbal medicine all my life. So there are a lot of herbs that do different things that we don't expect them to, good and bad. Yeah. In in my in my journey into mushrooms over the last couple of years, I've learned um, I've learned that you know, like you go to the grocery store and you buy your, your 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 mushrooms at the grocery store. So you're getting your, you know, whatever you bring home. Like there's a variety of different, like you know, Boston whites are what I usually buy because they're easy to make little stuffed mushrooms with, right? But even those all have medical benefits to them. It's not just the medicinal magic silly psilocybin mushrooms. Right. All mushrooms have uh, like and, and i bought a book it's it's healing mushrooms and the majority of this book is all about non-psychoactive mushrooms yeah yeah and the, what they do to help body. heal the body yeah shiitakes yeah, are amazing body. lion's yeah. mane is one of the top ones for mental clarity and i've started taking that I, you know minorly like you know like with my microdoses every three days and wow what a difference yeah i just I'm, ordered lion's mane it's amazing I just ordered Lion's Mane to make a new, we're working on a new formula. So I've ordered Lion's Mane for a new formula. But here's a little bit of history. My son was born immunocompromised. So anybody that walked by him with a cold or anything, he oh. would catch. And um, this is 30 years ago. I started giving him Chinese mushroom mix. And it was reishi and cordyceps and a whole bunch of mushrooms and and I don't know how I came upon this, but to help his immune system grow, that I used mushrooms. And not psychedelic mushrooms, regular food mushrooms. Yeah, I, I find it extremely interesting. And this, um, this lion's mane one, I've been, I've been experimenting with it now for probably about a month and a half. And it may, uh, it's, it's not um, psilocybin, so it's not, you know, it's not a psychedelic per se. 
but it does have some psychedelic tendencies. Like there are, um, it, it gives me mental clarity, but I find if I take it with a microdose, like I mean, my microdose, it's like unbelievably, you know, it's just so much better with that lion's me. Like I don't get high, but I just, you know, that good feeling, that bright feeling is bigger for some reason with the lion's mane at it. Thank you for the feedback because I, I, like I said, I'm starting, I'm, I'm just formulating. I basically, I formulate uh, products now. Yep. So I'm formulating for an, a new company here in Vancouver, someone who recognized by giving these to their family, their family had gone through um, the war in the Middle East and they had basically spent her childhood in bunkers under fire. So there's a lot of PTSD and, and um, anxiety and, and, and um, uh, depression, things related to that. And she couldn't believe the change in her. She started feeding them to her community and she couldn't believe the change in the community. Just how people's lives became brighter. Yep. And so I'm working with her to do a, a whole new, it'll be a new, new, new line of product. Oh, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Very exciting. I love that. Uh, Kim is having uh, having a technical issue up there. I'm trying to trying to solve it. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize when she's got a technical issue. That particular look on her face, I know it down pat. That's a beautiful <laughs> mushroom, Sita. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Nice. That's nice. Yeah, I got a little technical thing I'm just trying to solve here. You'll get it. She's a technical guru. She just doesn't think she is. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. Hopefully the guru gods are with me today. <laughs> with any luck, right? Uh, with any luck at all. So, Sita, you know, you've been doing this a long time, um, and you, you've, I imagine, helped quite a few people. Um, but it's not been really super popular other than the last 24 months. Tell us a little bit about um, what you've seen evolution wise with more of, of the conversation happening, the acceptance, uh, what's it been like in BC? Well, the acceptance is amazing because it's, it's just brought, it's just brought the whole thing so much further into the light. Um, People are now, now that people realize that there are doses that you don't get high on, I mean, that's, a, that's the biggest factor that I have to explain every single day is that, no, you're not going to get high. Um, and and then I, that's why I broke it down as one fortieth of a small recreational dose, right? It's, yep. one, it's one hundred and fiftieth of the dose that you took yesterday. Yeah, on the weekend, yeah. right? So it's yeah. so small. So that's that was the big. That's the biggest barrier, um, and people are more willing. I find, especially now with the pandemic and everything, people are more willing, more more willing to try something different. Yeah, they've tried everything. They've been sitting at home. They've tried this and they've tried that, and uh, this response I've gotten is amazing. Everything from grief. Um, I had one lady who lost her husband of 40 years and he'd done everything. He didn't know how to pay a bill. Um, and so there was not just the grief of losing the person that was, that had been supporting her all her life, but also now having to take over all his duties. And it was really overwhelming and the mushrooms helped her with that. Wow. Uh, and my, my most exciting case is um, a client with, uh, front lobe dementia. Frontal lobe dementia. Wow. Um, I was, I was, I was gonna. I, that question was specifically on my mind to ask you about this case because I know people will love to hear about it. I, I enjoy hearing about it every time. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm just no worries. Yeah. Um. Oops. Go away. <laughs> um. I don't know why this keeps going in and out. Um. <clears throat> so. I, I've been working with one, I, I often work with families. I start working with a parent and then they ask me about their child or their teenager. So I, I or their grandparents. So I, I often work with the whole family. And this family I've worked with for 
with cannabis um, for pain, for ADD, for Tourette's, for a um, bunch of reasons. And they approached me about six months ago now because their, their beloved father and husband has frontal lobe dementia at the age of 43. Oh, my God. And um, we started... We started on just the, the 25 and then we needed a little bit something more. And so I make, I make some that help for daytime, the caffeine ones. And I also have some that help with sleep and at night. And they've got 5-HTP in them. And the 5-HTP helps the brain. Um, actually, it helps with dreaming, but it also helps with sleep. So he started, he was he was not able to use cutlery. He was still going to work, but having to leave by, by one o'clock because he was exhausted. And um, since December, he, he's been able to go to work. He's been able to use regular cutlery instead of his weighted cutlery. And most important, he has been able to accept that he's going to die and Get his family to accept the fact too, and that to me is the biggest, the biggest piece in this. Is the, yeah. acceptance, the acceptance of dying, and and making it um, communicating to his family that this is not the end. This is just simply, you know, a path that we're on. And um, even though it's really sad, it, I see a beautiful family thing happening. Oh, that's that's fantastic that you know that they're coming together and they're learning to accept a to accept this right um, and I've never thought about it I mean I used to be and I still am fearful of death but since microdosing yeah like that fear has lessened a that's lot. what he said no he has no fear of death he's okay with it and like I said he's communicated that to the family and and he has been able to do it to the point where they're okay with it too. Oh, so this this is a whole healing, not just not just helping him. I mean, he he's, he has dementia. It's not rever. There hasn't been anything found to completely reverse it. This mm -hmm. seems to be slowing and and reducing the symptoms somewhat. Uh, he did have a brain scan, and there was no change. So we just don't know. This is brand new medicine, but absolutely. Brand new. It's, it's worth it, a try. What happens in the mind doesn't necessarily show up on a scan. That's right. exactly right. You know, um, there, there are no scans to show us what's going on inside somebody's brain and thought processes and that kind of thing. There are certain centers of the brain that will light up with certain emotions and that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, thought processes were not there yet. So we don't have scans for that. The, well, the patient is is the one that tells you if it's working or not. If they're better, then it's working. Yep. That's exactly it. And I, that's what I always, I always give people three, four here. Just try them and see. Do you, does your day more lit up? I have another client who, who was abused from childhood. And um, he said he's had thoughts of suicide all his life. And there wasn't a day he woke up that he wasn't miserable. And he started taking the caps and it's changed his life. He wakes up in the morning now. He says he wakes up with a smile on his face. That's amazing. That's, that's, that's amazing. And I know that's it what is. it does for me as well. I, I'm in the same boat with that. I mean, I do my macro doses um, to reset me. I know mm -hmm. that helps me as well. But it's also for fun. I'm not going to claim it's not because it absolutely is. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, having a letting loose and having fun once in a while. And if I'm going to get some health benefits out of the end, well, then all the better. I'm all for it. Um, but, you know, I, I do a macro dose once every couple of months. And it seems to keep me on the right track. But then the rest of the time, it's it's microdosing, and I'm not getting high, and I'm taking you know a little a small amounts every couple of days. If I miss you know a week of not doing it, I start feeling it a little bit. I'm I'm getting snappier with people. I don't have the same patience anymore. I am you know there's just a change, and it's like shit. 
when's the last time I did a micro? It's like, oh, it's been a week, eh? Yeah, okay, you better get on that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, boom, the lights come back on. Well, actually, it's actually exactly that's what happens in the brain. When you take a dose of 20, up to 25 milligrams, uh, your brain lights up when they do an MRI. Your brain yeah. lights up because the, the uh, mushrooms create new, uh, new neural connections. Yep. So that, that's why, so our brain, even like you said, that you may, maybe you can't exactly see on an MRI that the brain has gotten better, but you are, by using these mushrooms, you are, at the time that you're using them, you're creating more connections in the brain. Yeah, yeah that's right. And absolutely, that's, that's 100%. I mean, you feel it. Um, you know, things come to mind a little bit quicker. You're not stumbling over words. It's like, oh, I know what that is. Oh, I know what that is. It's like, just today, I'm I'm on my ball. You know, everything's just bang, bang. There it is. There it is. There it is. And you absolutely feel that uh, there is absolutely a stronger connection to your brain power. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. I know Cindy feels the same way. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm. I. I absolutely love the path that I've I've gotten on with the magic mushrooms. I'm. Very thankful I found um, somebody like Sita who was willing to speak so openly about it after, because so many people, even even now, even with the acceptance that we're getting into these days, um, I find a lot of people when they want to ask me about silly side and they'd rather do it in person. They're they're scared about, um, they're, they're scared of you know Joe Law type uh, type yeah. thing, right? Um, but it was it, it's refreshing to to find people that are so willing to be open with it and. Um, you know, it has given me the inspiration to be open with my path and to share my knowledge, right? Because, you know, the more we get it out there, um, again, I, I keep going back to a friend, a friend said something to me once uh, about cannabis, really, but it really, it falls into all natural healing. Um, each one, teach one. So as you learn, you teach what you've learned. Um, and that's how we're going to get natural medicine, um, you know, back into mainstream. Well, I've been involved in natural medicine for 45 years now, oops, yes, at least um, as an adult. And uh, I have always tried to find the natural alternative to whatever, you know, drugs or medicines or whatever is out there all my life. So yep. I've done herbal medicine and there's so many alternatives and there's so many, so many different things that you can do, but we can't keep getting defeated by, by the system. Our doctors are not, by law, allowed to tell us about vitamin C, about um, magnesium, and herbs, and mushrooms. They're not. They they sign an oath that they're only going to to talk about or or to to prescribe what they've been taught about. Isn't that yes, crazy? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then they they go out. The minute they go outside of that, um, they're they're open to prosecution. And losing like, their that's crazy. That's crazy. Number one basis for all our health is nutrition. Yep. I mean, they you know have squat, to they know squat about nutrition. I have kept I've kept my gallbladder for for all my life because of nutrition. Not yeah, nothing works without proper nutrition, but we don't discuss that at the doctor anymore. They just want to give you a pill that will fix whatever's wrong with you from the malnutrition. Well, yeah. for, for example, I have high cholesterol, right? So they want me to, to eat margarine and fake fats. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> instead, of, instead of real fats. No. 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 No, like go eat plastic. It's better for you. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing is that they don't know, even the nutritionist, I went, saw a nutritionist because I, I had to go and get tests done and go through the whole heart thing because of my age and everything. And, and they were shocked at how much butter and eggs I eat. If it's <laughs> natural, it's not bad for you. I mean, if you put a tub of margarine out in the middle of a park, the animals and the bugs don't eat it. What's well, that tub? Margarine was originally uh, designed to fatten turkeys. Yeah. 
It killed bugs the animals won't eat it. I mean, the, the bugs leave it alone. They don't even they land on it. They force fed the turkeys and it killed them. So yeah. then they had this patent and they had this product. So they made a butter substitute and fed it to people. They and, fed it to humans and instead of instead of saying that that um that sugar was was the problem, they said that fats were the problem, the good fats. Yeah. Like the bacon grease and the butter. Yeah, no. Uh, we eat all farm stuff. My my entire fridge and freezer is filled with everything that comes from the farm. And I buy very little in the grocery store. It's and and I I'm as healthy as I can be given the diet that I have, you know, because the doctors blew my, my pancreas, but that's another story. But you know, I mean the farm fresh is is so much better than the processed foods. And if you are stuck with a bad diet, then at least, you know, there's natural stuff out there that you can do to supplement and to cure your system to create homeostasis. And psychedelic therapy also has healing properties within the body is something else I learned very recently. Always concentrating on the mind, it does help the body as well. I'm sure you've got a lot to say about that, but I'm looking at the clock and I noticed it's break time. Yes. So Cindy's going to run the commercial for us. And while we're on commercial, Cindy's going to switch the background to the OYE background. <laughs> reporters. And when we come back, we'll have more with Cita talking about microdosing and psychedelic therapy here on Open Your Eye on the Face Radio Network on faceradio.net. <laughs> You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. Growing your own vegetables, flowers, or even medicinal plants can be a challenge without the right equipment and proper know-how. At BMA Hydroponics, not only are they your urban horticultural experts and suppliers, but their staff holds the customer's needs paramount to making a sale. Family-owned with decades of experience and knowledge, they offer free advice in person by phone or email. BMA Hydroponics wants to ensure you have the advice you need, which is why you'll find tips and tricks on different ways to grow, like wick, ebb and flow, drip, or aeroponic system, as well as other helpful links at bmahydroponics.com. If you can't find what you're looking for, just let them know, and they'll do everything they can to get what you're looking for. At BMA Hydroponics, each staff member also possesses a federal exempt MMAR license, making their strong suit, empathy, experience, and dedication to their customers. Because when you know how to grow, you'll have results that make you proud. BMA Hydroponics in Belleville, Ontario. Visit bmahydroponics.com. CTCP operates Medicinal Cannabis Signing Clinic. If you want to grow your own medicinal cannabis and are located anywhere in Canada, then I'd like to suggest that you give them a call. They can be reached at 1-613-967-9888. That's 1-613-967-9888. Eight and grow on with CTCP. Pace Radio is the people advocating cannabis education radio network. A doctor's job is to relieve your pains. And when it comes to growing cannabis, the biggest pain is trimming. Let Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions take the pain away. Whether you're a home grower or a commercial operation, we have the cure. From four plants to 400 plants, garden size doesn't matter. Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions comes to you with years of experience and professional discreet service. It's simple. We trim your weed and we do a damn good job. Visit drbuckcts.com to book your trimming. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in-store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. At Legacy 420, we believe in being different. Experience the difference of quality control. Our labs provide tested formulations for all of our products. Experience the difference in trust. Our customers can trust that we are following up-to-date COVID precautions 
for their safety. Experience the difference in accessibility. We're open seven days a week. Please visit our website, Legacy420.com, or contact us for curbside pickup as well as nationwide mail order shipping. Legacy 420 values overall wellness. Come and experience the difference of Legacy 420. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. I have the right background up now, too. <laughs> and you got the right background up now. All right. <laughs> we're no, we are no longer the Reaper Reporters. Now we are. Open your eyes. <laughs> Cindy's doing great learning how to produce. Um, I mean, we threw you in there, like, head first. There was no feet first. It was head first. It's like, hi, welcome to the network. You want to do a show? Great. Guess what? You're producing. <laughs> it, it, it was pretty much that fast, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've loved every second it. of it, though. You grabbed it, man, and you've been running, and it's been it's been fantastic. I knew you were the right choice. That's all I got to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And we are back, of course, with Sita. Sita, I know I'm going to ask you, how do you pronounce your last name, hon? Vaughn? Windheim. Windheim. I said it wrong. There we go. I, I it's, a diff- it's a difficult one. Windheim. Okay. And I, I guess I've got Melanie in my head and I, I did Willem. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, all good. it's all good. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I did just. just yeah, I, I screwed that up. Sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, Tina, it's been you know you've been so prominent in this in this uh, industry for a bit now, and we'll wait for her to come back. <laughs> it's okay. We can always we can always like you know make up for you using win, like whatever you called her. We can call you Kim Coop uh, um, not, instead of Cooper Copper. Kim Copper. How you Copper, doing? Yeah, I've gotten that. I've gotten that before. Double P instead of the double Copper, R. Yeah, yeah, Kim Copper. Yeah, yeah, I've gotten that before, for sure, for sure. But see, you've been doing this for a really long time. You must have, um, you you must have seen a lot of a lot of stuff over the years with treating different people for different stuff, right? Oh yeah, I've I've been I've been working uh, not just in, in cannabis and mushrooms, but I I used to also do uh, cranial sacral therapy. I don't have time for it right now, but, um, so I I used to do hands on healing, and um, and so I've I've seen a lot of transformations, and I have to say that the psilocybin microdose for. Um, for the amount that you take and how often you take it and the cost is by far the most wide reaching um, medicine that I have so far encountered. Wow. wow. Cannabis, is, cannabis is really wonderful medicine and it, it, I've had a lot of experience with cannabis and cancer, positive experiences. But as far as everyday life goes, I find that the mushrooms are enhancing people's lives. What's that squeak? And I'm not, not sure. Sorry, the squeak? We have a squeak. You guys hear that or is it just on my end? No, I hear it. And it's not from here. Yeah, no, I don't know where it's coming from. Huh. Somebody's okay, phone or radio on? I don't know. I'm not sure. It's like a, it's like we're hearing a reverb. It's strange. Yeah. yeah. But but go on, um, see to hopefully. On, I mean, like it wasn't it wasn't here before, so hopefully it'll go away, right? Yeah. Go ahead. So um, where was I? Sorry, now I'm. I'm sorry. My bad. It was just like, oh my god, what is that? <laughs> so now I'm trying to get back on track. Um. So what I've seen over the years, the mushrooms being the most um, broadly effective and not in the microdose, not affected. So when you, when you get sick and, and have cancer, you need to take cannabis medicine. You have to take a lot of it and a lot of people can't handle it. Where yeah. this, so this works more on the subtle energy and cranial sacral therapy is also a light touch therapy. So it's osteopathy with five grams, basically. Yeah. Um, so that that's so I'm really I really like the light touch approach. And 
I got to I got to watch you perform that actually a couple of years ago in Cranbrook when um uh uh oh my gosh her name is escaping me a little girl a, a, a cannabis warrior came along and you were you performed that on her feet and you helped immensely uh, with the cramping of her feet because her feet were almost facing inwards and upwards and you helped them relax it was really kind of it was really cool to watch it's it's an amazing therapy and if i had more time i would do it more often and and i i studied for 10 years and and i'm actually teaching assistant for the school but right now there's no there are no classes and um mm. so I, that's how i kept in touch with the therapy for many years was to teach uh, be a teaching assistant twice a mm. year and um so i really miss that i and there's nobody to work on i love working on impromptu on um sarah's daughter i'm trying to think of her name that's who you that's who i saw you work on yes yeah. and yet yeah, her name is escaping me to mia mia exactly yes yeah, yes so that's who i saw you work on i love doing that because it's it's just you know it's just energy it's universal energy that i learned how to tell and it helps me move and relax so that's why i love the subtle energy of the mushroom so much um that it it's not it's not a hard all approach it's a very yeah. soft gentle approach if you need it you can do the macro doses but yeah. micro doses work so well um yeah. there's also recently some some i just had some um company that I formulated some coffees for are branching into uh, the potential therapeutic uses of psilocybin for treating obesity and weight management. Wow. So this company has just uh, formed a medical advisory board to guide in the planning and operation of Neon Mind branded clinics across Canada. Interesting. And Very the board will be comprised of provincial and local healthcare experts in advocacy, ketamine treatment, and psychotherapy protocols and clinical operations. That's so they're looking well, at there's open. so many healing properties, and it's not just the mind. Um, I, I think we talked a little bit. I, I hinted towards this just before the break. Um, you know, I never really put it together. But, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit at the start of the show, how other regular mushrooms have the healing properties. You know, you can, your shiitake are highly beneficial for your immune system and immune boosters. Um, and various mushrooms have different healing properties within them. Yet when, for me at least, and I think for most people, when we think about psychedelic ones, we don't think about the body healing properties. We think about the mind effects how it's going to help your brain, how it's going to help your PTSD, it's going to help your depression. But there are also bodily effects that take place with all of these psychedelic therapies. Um, this came up in conversation about ayahuasca. And I, I would think that the various types of psilocybin mushrooms would also have the physical healing properties as well, right? So you've heard of the 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 gut brain connection? Yeah. Um, there there's a very there's a beautiful nerve that I love to reference called the vagus nerve, and yeah. it's 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 a separate nervous system that rather than running through your spine, runs through your whole body and connects all your your um, organs to your brain, and and this so going on the premise that a lot of people have unhealthy guts. Their, their guts have been depopulated of the bacteria that is needed because the gut gives information to the brain via this um, nerve. So if your gut is unhealthy, your brain is going to be unhealthy. And even such things as using not the alcohol hand sanitizer, but the, the uh, triethylene, whatever it is, the, the chemical hand sanitizers, that um, do not contain alcohol, they're water-based, no alcohol. Those mm -hmm. are really bad because they, alcohol will just, will just kill whatever's on your skin and blow off. These chemical um, hand sanitizers, what they do, they get absorbed by your skin 
Yeah. And your skin's your largest organ, so immediately they go to your gut. And they kill all the good bacteria, not just on your hands, but in your whole system. So pretty soon your whole body's walking around without its proper fauna and flora. Mushrooms help repopulate these uh, fauna and flora to your gut. Very interesting. Cool. So it's a, and, you know, it's funny because the next day after doing um, mushrooms, I always, I always, my stomach feels so much better. Number one, it's empty by morning. And then you're like, feel like a million dollars. I could eat anything. I, I feel great. So it's, it's curing the gut while it's going through. Hey, do you ever eat any... Um any lactose uh, vegetables, like sauerkraut? Yes. Okay, so I suggest one day, you and these are cold processed, these are not processed, just cold fermented, right? Yeah. Okay, so the, um, I love that, I make those vegetables myself with salt water and um, uh, lacto caps, or yeah. caps. and I didn't realize how strong just those veggies are until one day I, I ate a bowl and I went for a drive and I do not like going for this drive because it's on the highway and especially when it's raining, I don't like it. And I ate a bowl of these veggies, ran out and like halfway through the drive, I thought, why am I so happy? This is, I, I, I'm usually grumpy when I'm driving the stretch of road because I don't like it and I feel anxiety. Well, I realized it was simply because of these probiotic vegetables that I had eaten had helped my gut and make me feel more happy. See, I make my own sauerkraut, but I just use the, the cabbage and the salt water. What else do you put in there? So I do. I do. It's, it's called a, a lacto fermentation. And I use any hard vegetables. Beets are really good. Beets are amazing for you. So what, what this fermentation does is partially digest the vegetable and populates it with lots of lactobacteria which is the lactobacillus is really good for your gut yes. and um the more the more uh you, different ones you can get the better for your system so i chop up hard veggies like carrots beets um cauliflower you can put a bit of cabbage in and I cut, it, I cut it into bigger chunks rather than making it really small. I cut it into little bite-sized chunks, about, you know, half, three-quarters of an inch. And then you just uh, fill the jar up with salt water. And I can give you the recipe. And you add one capsule of probiotics to, like, two, two, two liter jars. And then you leave yeah. it on the counter to ferment for three, four days, depending on how sour you like it. And once it's sour enough, you just put it in the fridge. And you can drink the brine and you can eat the vegetables. It's so good for you. And you will see, it'll make it'll make you feel so much better. I was going to say, yeah, this is this is gut to brain. So this is gut health. And this could help your, whether it's your gallbladder or your pancreatitis. Like this, Anybody that has digestive issues. And yeah. they're so prominent today because of our food and because of Gross the heart and pharmaceuticals. There. Everybody's got a bad gut now. Yep. Well, the thing is that first what we do is we, we eat all and use all the stuff on our bodies. We spray the house with antibacterials. Uh, we wash our hands with, with antibacterials. Uh, so we're killing all the good bacteria in our body, and then we're eating their sugar in everything. Then we're eating so much sugar, and this the bad bacteria live on sugar. So you're not you're creating a total imbalance of having no good bacteria. Lots of bad ones like yeasts and molds grow in sugar. Yeah. So this is what's living in your body now instead of the healthy bacteria. No wonder you're feeling unhappy and cranky and and not good a friend of mine recently gave up all sugar and he's 60 and he says it has his circles have cleaned up under his eyes um his gut has gone down and most of all his joints don't hurt yeah so when you change your diet you can do the micro dosing that'll help the brain it will help the gut health as well because the mushrooms have that effect 
But if your main issues um, are coming from that kind of thing, you also have to change your lifestyle, which includes your diet, right? That's right. Yeah. So you can't just um, start microdosing with a periodic macrodose and think that you can continue eating McDonald's cheeseburgers. Not if you want to get healthy. If you want to get, you know, if you want to get better in the very short term, you can do that, right? But if you want to get better, get healthy in the long term, there are very simple ways that you can change your your whole outlook on food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was a big one for our family was changing our diet. Uh, we we as uh, when the kids were young. And uh, everybody was on a very tight budget and, you know, we weren't as established then. You know, there was a lot of processed food in the house because it was fast. I was working two jobs. You know, it's like, okay, what are we having? This is what we're having. Okay, good. We're on it. And uh, I really noticed the, the health effects of all of that. Overall, different things would happen with different kids. And as I slowly got rid of all of that and changed and, and we went back to farm fresh food and no, I'm taking the time and I'm making dinner. And, and the, the health of the entire household changed. Yeah, absolutely. I've cut out, um, you know, I, I started by cutting out pop was my first one. So I cut out like all soda. Um, I, I cheat once in a long while and I'll have a Pepsi with, you know, like with a, you know, a slice of pizza or something, but like that's once every few months. And, uh, so I've, I've cut out, I've cut out that, um, and I am trying now to switch from, from sugar to honey in my tea, um, going with local honey and it makes a difference. Like, I mean, when you combine it with, uh, you know, getting off of prescription medicines and going with, um, a more natural medicine, it makes a huge difference in a person's life. And it, you can, you see the benefits in a very short time. So those people that want to make a difference in their life and they need to see, like it, it, it helps them to stay on that path to see a benefit, you know, natural medicines and changing your diet, you see a benefit very quickly. Very quickly. And if you're on the natural medicine path and you're already thinking in that direction, you're trying to make the right changes for your life to get better. Uh, and find wellness and, and, you know, stability and everything. Well, that goes hand in hand with our diet and our lifestyle as well. You can't just start consuming canna, cannabis oil to create homeostasis and, you know, microdosing um, mushrooms or psilocybin uh, for your PTSD and your depression and, and carry on with the current lifestyle you have because you'll get over a small hump, but you won't get to where you want to be. You have no. But they're, they're, they're a really great start. Um, and that's how I started. And, you know, now, like I said, I'm, I'm cutting out the sugars and I'm cutting, you know, I'm going to cut out the starches and, you know, it's, it's all become, it all works together to, to make a person feel better. And I mean, yeah, the physical feeling is really, really great. But for me, it's the mental health. Like, I mean, I've been yeah. suffering with PTSD for over 40 years and I need it to be under control. And this is a really great way for me to start. For sure, for Absolutely. sure. I think, I think people that gravitate towards natural therapy, if they're starting to look into this, I, like I say, I think they're already sort of on that path. You know, once once you embark and you, you get into the psilocybin or you get into the cannabis as a natural medicine, it seems you, you take the next steps and you find out what else is natural. And it just seems to be an evolution. Well, I think, I think once, once you start feeling good, you take something that makes you feel good um, and you, then you, you slide back and you go into your old habits. You realize you're feeling bad. So, so our, our, natural, our, our natural drive is to feel good. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Once, once you start, you, oh, God, I just, I just ate that McDonald's burger and I feel like crap. I'm not eating that again. Right? Exactly. There's one little step. And sugar actually is, is the biggest problem because it's, it's very addictive. Yep. So if you, if you start cutting out sugar out of your diet, you'll notice rather than taking your regular two spoons, you'll be taking one and a half and then one. And pretty soon you, you know, you'll have a teacup with one spoon of sugar. You go, Ooh, that's way too sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping for, and I hope, to, like I say, I hope to switch to the natural honey because 
I'll still get my, my sweet without getting the sugar. And, uh, um, you know, we were talking here a minute ago um, and what came to my mind when we were talking about how psilocybin, it not just affects the brain, but the body at the same time. Um, when I, I'm, I'm going to BC for an iboga ceremony um, and uh, one, of, one of its wonderful traits is it flushes the body. Um, so I've asked my guide, you know, like I'm pretty addicted to sugar. Is this going to help me? Like when I leave there, will I have a better chance of not? He's like, oh, Absolutely. <clears throat> And it, I've got an allergy to trees. Going through this iboga ceremony could almost cure that allergy to trees. So when I come home, I don't need the allergy meds that I'm currently taking gourds of just to be able to breathe and not have eyes that are swollen up to here, right? I'm really excited about like all of the, the natural therapies and the psychedelic therapies. Like they, they offer such um, hope to people that, you know, five years ago didn't have hope. Yeah, for sure. And the acceptance right now is, yeah. wow. Yeah. The train is going forward. Um, you know, you've been doing this a long time, CD, and you make your, your caps and you help so many people. Um, tell us a little bit about the caps that you make and the medicines that you make. I'd like to hear more about that. So I, I, my biggest dose that I make currently is 100 milligrams. I... The, the, my, my, um, I do a microdose of 25, 50, and 100 milligrams. Most people are good with the 25s. Some people need the 50s. That's just their body makeup. And some people like taking the 100s because it gives them a bit more of a buzz. Um, and those are the basic ones. And then I make one for sleep with 10 milligrams and 5-HTP, which is a, a chemical that helps us sleep. And uh, it's, um, oh, I forget right now what it's related to. It just escapes my mind. But it does help with brain function. And then there's a daytime one that has three kinds of uh, caffeine, natural derived caffeine from green tea, uh, guarana, and cola nut. And um, those are really nice for a daytime. Like if you want to get stuff done, it just gives you a little lift. And then if you, you have a couple of tokes, it gives you even better lift. Very cool. I, I'm interested in those sleep ones. I'll send you some. That would be very cool. Yeah. That would be very cool. Um, when I do uh, when I do my occasional macro dose every few months, that night is the best sleep that I have, and I'll go to sleep and you know half to three quarters of the way through my uh, my little trip, and that's when I go to bed, and I have the best sleep. And everybody's like, "How can you go to bed?" And it's like, "Oh yeah, man, I'm gonna crash. I'm gonna crash hard." And I, I just, I'm out. But the dreams and what happens during that sleep, most of it I don't remember. I remember bits and parts, but while it's happening, it's very trippy for sure. But I'm sleeping and I wake up in the morning and I am like completely rested. Yeah, I wonder if those dreams and things, I wonder if that's similar to the iboga where your you, your brain starts dumping stuff out. Yeah, like it's computer, out the <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me is that computer is cleaning itself out through yeah. that that you're you're losing stuff that you no longer need. Yeah. You're cleaning yeah. the trash bin. Yeah, it seems that that's way and and it's after my macrodoses they're always the same. Half to 3 quarters of the way through. No, I'm I'm going to bed now. I'm going to finish this in my bed. And uh, I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> I, I, I do the same thing. And uh, that gives me great hopes for my iboga ceremony. I mean, like, you know, like, I, I will have a great one in my sleep, right? Like, it's going to be fantastic. Yeah. 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 I find it very beneficial. I wake up the next day and I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm a Superman. I'm ready to go. Yeah, full of energy. What are we doing today? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else is still asleep yet. Yeah, um, let's go. 
whoa, and everybody was up for another six hours past me, so they just went to bed a little while ago, and I'm like, yeah, okay, let's do this. <laughs> Obviously, you're having tremendous beneficial effects on you. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> it's the best thing ever, uh, for sure, for sure. And that's why I do it every couple of months. It's it's like a complete reboot for me. Everything gets cleaned up. Okay, I'm good to go again. And then the micros keep me there uh, for several months. Wonderful. That's yeah. fantastic. You know what I forgot to mention is the tea. The tea. You do a yes. tea. I do I'm a tea granny. Are you? Yeah. So so the, these are these are one gram tea. Like these have one gram of, of mushrooms in each one. Nice. So you so you can choose to drink the whole pot, or you can choose to drink a, a little bit a day. Um, yeah. it's, it's actually a, it's to help people access um, mushroom medicine. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't want to eat a mushroom. They're nervous about taking a cap. Um, yeah, a cup of tea feels safer. Have you tried the tea, Cindy? Yes. No, I Cindy has. I have it. Okay. What? How is the flavor? Did you like it? Uh, it's it's good. Now what I what I did is I took an orange pico uh, and I I brewed them together. Okay. And so the orange pico, like, because I, I love my orange pico, my Tetley tea, right? So it just tasted like an earthy Tetley tea, and it was fantastic. So did you put milk and sugar in it? Um, I put a little bit of sugar in it and drank it black. Oh, okay, good. Because yeah. it's yep. got citric acid in it, I don't recommend milk. So the, what the citric acid does is, I don't know if you've heard of this lemon something or other where they mix the lemon tech. mushroom, lemon tech, right. Um, uh, so what I've done is I've, I've added um, citric acid, which is what the lemon does. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's just lemon. That's just citric acid, right? Yeah. Dried, dehydrated lemon. So I've added that to the tea bag so that it, it will it will help extract every last bit of psilocybin from that tea packet. And yeah, yeah. I use it in my bars. It also it also protects the stomach. <laughs> um, taking it with citrus. Uh, um, some people get an upset stomach if they if they eat or if they drink their their psilocybin. Um, it, it affects their stomach. They get a sore stomach or an upset stomach. Uh, lemon is um, has the has the trait of stopping that for people yeah. that, that that happens to. I'm lucky enough that that's never happened to. But the the you know the lemon the citrus for some reason seems to help uh, yeah. get rid of that upset stomach. There's lemon, orange, and ginger in the tea as well. So nice. the lemon and the orange to help to protect the stomach and the ginger, just in case you're feeling a little queasy. Nice. Yep. All good beneficial for you. And I love what, I love the name that you've given them fairy circles. Like, I mean, like, oh, this thank is just, you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, I love them. It's a great little package. That's fantastic. What a great lineup of products. I mean, you've got the capsules in various doses and you've got the tea. What else? Um, and mushrooms, that, that's about it. That's about it. But you're also quite adept at cannabinoid therapy. We're going to touch on that just a little bit. It is a mushroom show, but we can't, can't talk to Sita without talking about cannabinoid therapy just a little bit. Um, of course, I think the one that comes to mind for everybody right off the bat is Icy Pot. That's right. That's, uh, that's my, my, uh, my most successful product. I, I grew out of that. I was tired of all the greasy bombs and yeah. nobody was making anything. So, so I, I uh, got, I learned about formulation, formulating uh, creams and lotions and made one that's water-based instead. And it has my proprietary root extract in it as well. So the roots of the cannabis plant, you know, we're not talking flowers or seeds here. We're talking about the roots. They are very beneficial too, and uh, they're fantastic. the The root serum that I make is fantastic for cuts and burns and scrapes. And um, I use it at home pure, but for formulation purposes, I put it into the icy pot to help heal, and it helps with headaches and 
anywhere you buy it, really. Amazing. Yes. Again, once again, you're ahead of the game. You're ahead of the curve. Because, I mean, now we're seeing in the last, you know, 12, 15 months, people and scientists and, and geneticists now looking at the roots, saying, hey, look, guys, the roots have all these benefits, and it's starting to make the mainstream news. And there's Sina with Icy Pot on the market already. <laughs> Yep. Always ahead of the curve, Sita. You're on it. Yeah, I try. And then I have it in plain, and I have it with CBD and T or THC. So Amazing. just for those people that are worried about the THC aspect or even the CBD aspect, it, it still works plenty good without THC or CBD. Yeah, yeah. It's just the root. And, you know, we've been saying for years in the community, the roots have benefits, too. You know, but nobody really paid attention. Well, um, the, a company I was working for has been trying to get Health Canada to approve this root serum. And there's just no way with all their stupid regulations right now, the roots actually fall in between the cracks. There's no way to get them approved at Health Canada for use. Wow. That's crazy. That that really makes me wonder. Maybe they found something in them that they're they don't want to. Well, that's always the way. They're trying to hide something. Usually, if they don't want to approve something, there's a reason for it. It's going to cut into their profit margin somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't me. It was professional people that are trying to get this approval from Health Canada. So yeah. yeah going to cut into the profit margin somewhere, I guarantee. The last, the last time I grew, I dried out the roots and I took them and pummeled them into a powder and mixed mm -hmm. them with flour and I used them in baking. Yeah. You and do it was, have to be careful because there's, if you have any liver issues, there's, uh, there are two chemical compounds and one of them I think is Friedlin that can affect your liver. I okay. did, I did a whole research paper on, on them. Um, um, I have I've read a lot about people who have used it ingested as tea, but never as a flower. So did yeah. you, and what effects did you find that it? Um, I, I found it to be like a, almost like a really strong CBD. Like I, it was, um, I didn't get high. I, I, I just got relaxed and, yeah. and like the, like my joints seemed looser and, you know, more lubricated, like it, it very CBD, but like effects, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so I yeah. had, when I made the serum, I had it tested. There's no THC or CBD in it. None. Oh, no? I don't know so what, what's in it. but like, that mirrors that then. Pardon? Yeah. There's something in there that mirrors that effect. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Infinitely healing. Um, I, 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 I impaled my arm on a, on a stick in the garden, and it swelled up to the size of a baseball. And oh. it had a hole where I could stick my finger in. And I refused to get it stitched. And I just applied the roots. And within two days, the swelling was gone. The redness was gone. And uh, within a couple of weeks, it healed over completely. And there's no scar there today. Wow. And see, you know, maybe there's no THC. Maybe there's no CBD. But there are other properties in there that we haven't even explored yet. Yes. You know? Yeah. And then that's, that's the amazing thing. Uh, you know, it started for me, it started with cannabinoid therapy. I went on to using, you know, natural food and changed my diet. Then it expanded into psychedelic therapy from there. Now, I mean, I'm, I am a teenager that grew up in the 1970s as a teen. So I'm no stranger to psychedelics, that's for sure. Um, I used them plenty growing up for recreational purposes. But then, you know, once you're on that path, you find psychedelic therapy as a medicine and you start putting two and two together why you did use it so much as a teen in your youth. And you find out once again, look at that, it's all medical. Exactly. You know, yeah. so I mean, full circle. Yep. When I did psychedelics as a, as a teenager in my 20s, it, um, you know, I thought I was just out for the party, but like, I mean, I was a very shy kid because of what had happened to me when I was a little girl. Um, and it took my social anxiety and kind of tossed it out the window. 
and, you know, on a hit of acid or on a gram and a half of mushrooms, I believe that I was the person for those few hours that I should have been all along because yeah. my, my shyness and my PTSD and my fear of getting close to people was tossed out the window for a few hours. Yeah. Yeah. It gave you that strength. It brought you into who you are. So yeah. You a little bit. But when we're young, we just think, oh, I was tripping. Yeah. Oh, I was high. That's part of the high. That's being high. Um, it's not until you, you know, you reason through it later and you realize, hey, you know, that that was doing what it was supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, the first time I did acid, I was uh, I went to a fair, you know, with rides and all that stuff. And um, somebody gave me a head of acid and I was actually on the pirate ship going up when it when it took effect. Oh, what a trip. Speaking of trips. But I, I went from like just holding the bar and going, yeah, this is fun to like my arms were up in the air. I was screaming. I was hooting. I was hollering. I was having the best time of my life. And if it wasn't for the LSD, it would have been like, yeah, that was a kind of a fun memory. But I can mean, wow, that was a fun memory, right? Yeah. But I mean, yeah. that's what all kids should experience when they're at the fair. What I finally experienced on the LSD, I should have been going through every year naturally. So your PTSD prevented that. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. So I mean, it's a medicine all the way around. It is psychedelic therapy. It's not. Uh, people have to keep that in mind. This is another therapy in the realm of natural healing. Absolutely. You know, and Sita, Sita's on it. She sure is. <laughs> <laughs> I swear by the uh, I swear by the icy pod. It is uh, it's in my medicine cabinet all the time. Um, my father swears by it now, and uh, it can be like I, I constantly uh, the sleep caps and the uh, the focus caps that she spoke of. They're always I I mean if if I get down to like having only five in my bottle, it's just like oh god, Sita, you guys send me more. <laughs> like they have to be here. Like, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I have insomnia at three o'clock in the morning. The only thing that'll help me sleep is I, you know, I get up and I take a cap, I smoke a joint. And by the time I finish my joint, the cap is taking effect and I fall asleep naturally. Um, you know, and otherwise I, I'd have many sleepless nights. So I'm very thankful for, for Sita and her, and her sleep caps. And far better than taking a pharmaceutical. I'm glad, I'm glad that I've been guided. Yeah, I'm grateful that I've been guided to be able to, to uh, know about to know about this medicine and to be able to provide it. Me too. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're almost at the end of the show, uh, we got a few minutes left. Sita, is there anything that you would like to make sure that we cover and discuss before we wrap it up? No, I think we've got pretty well everything. I just, I just really wanted to remind people of of the 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 gut brain connection and that we that while it's wonderful to take all this medicine, we really need to get on a healing journey of our entire bodies and start looking at ways that we can eat healthier and better and, and also not support these huge multinational companies that yeah. are making huge profits off of people giving them crap food. Um, yeah. And you, you know, you mentioned that as a mom, you, you provided a lot of these foods for your kids because a lot of people just don't know any better. Yeah. Um, and get a yeah. cooking pot, get a cooking pot, and go out and buy a pound of beans and a pound of rice, like they do in Central America. Yeah, right. You can make good food with a couple of vegetables. You can make your own good food if that's all you can afford. There, are, there's no excuse for going to McDonald's and giving them your money. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Or you know, I didn't know that. Single you know, out that's McDonald's at all fast food places. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the way, you know, I mean, it's advertised, the kids want it, everybody caves, it, it, it was the way of life until you wake up and you're like, what the hell is happening here? And, uh, and you can't, you've got to stop. You have to not allow that to happen. And uh, you're the only one that can make the change. I, I'm so glad that I finally did. Uh, you know, I'm sorry it took so long. And I hope well, others are able to wake up sooner. The thing is, is, it depends on how you grew up. I grew up in a, in a traditional German family. My parents still, my parents had a farm in Ontario for 20 years before when they were in Germany, they ate foods from the farm. So, um, so I grew up 
knowing what good food was and um, wanting to feed my kids good food and me not tolerating bad food on top of that. Yeah. I, don't, I, I eat French fries, I eat three. That's it. I love French fries, but I'll eat three. So yeah. this is how I deal. I love donuts. I'll have a bite. Yeah. Just to remind me what it tastes like. I get a Timbit now. I'll, I'll go and I'll get like a little Timbit or a donut hole, depending on where you go. And that way mm -hmm. you, you get your taste without having the whole donut there tempting the you. Thing, because how my do you hubby think is still, is still like the, My hubby still likes the takeout. And then that, and we'll be on the road and he'll get something and I just look at him and he's eating whatever he's eating. It's like, oh God, how can you eat that? Okay, give me a bite. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I have my little bite. It's like, okay, I'm good now. <laughs> if we can all start to learn how to do that, and I think the mushrooms help with that because yeah. they help give us a different perspective on on our lives, not on life, but on our lives. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. 100%. CD, you have a lot of marvelous products that are available out there for all our listenership that is watching or listening to today's broadcast. How did they get in touch with you, sweetheart? Um, I currently don't have a working website. Basically, I email me at orders at canamed.ca is there any way you can type this up on the screen um i can put it on the ad uh on the ad after we're done i also have a link to your facebook page up on the ad at canamed where you can reach out to Sita as well okay i will make sure i go to i'm really bad about facebook and all that stuff i i don't have instagram no tweets and, and nothing um yeah. I think you're probably better for it. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of drama that goes on on the on the social medias these days, and because yeah. every everybody's home and that's all they do is that they're on the social yeah. media, and that's you know, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty not crazy. It's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, so you will check messages on Facebook uh, through the link Canamed link. If you're interested in getting some of these wonderful products, such as the microdose uh, capsules that she makes as well as the awesome Icy Pot and other cannabinoid therapy products that are available, contact CETA on Facebook. And if you have a hard time, contact one of us and we'll find her for you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me on today. It was a pleasure chatting to both of you. And, uh, thank you for being here. And Cindy, yes. I'm going to see you in person. Yes, yeah. in, in less than a month. Yeah. Wow, look forward to it. Me we too. Should yeah. We should do a, a little show or a video from maybe one yeah. of the days or something. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Sure. I'll, I'll be up and running and back running by then. I can run the board. You can use the phone and I'll take care of it all. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I only have to do this once more for this show and that's good. So <laughs> maybe okay. not even next time if you can get your computer up. I can get it going, then we'll be back. <laughs> But it's been fantastic chatting with you, Sita. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us here on Open Your Eye on the Pace Radio Network at paceradio.net. Of course, as always, my awesome joint host, Miss Cindy Howell, in the house, running the board and doing her thing and, and saving the show and rescuing us all. The <laughs> lovely Sita in the house. We will put links up for everybody to get a hold of Sita at the end of the show. And uh, get a hold of her and get a hold of some capsules and some icy pot. We will be back in two weeks' time again here on Open Your Eye with another special guest. And tune in then to catch more on psychedelic therapy here on paceradio.net. We'll chat with y'all later. Ciao for now. The opinions of the individuals during this broadcast are their own and may not be the opinions of their group or other organizations they may be involved with. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net.
You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. At Legacy 420, we believe in being different. Experience the difference of quality control. Our labs provide tested formulations for all of our products. Experience the difference in trust. Our customers can trust that we are following up-to-date COVID precautions for their safety. Experience the difference in accessibility. We're open seven days a week. Please visit our website, Legacy420.com, or contact us for curbside pickup as well as nationwide mail order shipping. Legacy 420 values overall wellness. Come and experience the difference of Legacy Legacy 420. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. What do you find at paceradio.net? People Advocating Cannabis Education. The People Advocating Cannabis Education Radio Network provides its listeners with news, information, and a place to be heard. This is done with a twice-weekly broadcast of the Reefer Reporters and by providing cannabis advocates a place to be heard through Cannabis and Coffee with Marijuana and the award-winning Pace Radio Show. Catch it all here at paceradio.net. A doctor's job is to relieve your pains. And when it comes to growing cannabis, the biggest pain is trimming. Let Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions take the pain away. Whether you're a home grower or a commercial operation, we have the cure. From four plants to 400 plants, garden size doesn't matter. Dr. Buck Cannabis Trimming Solutions comes to you with years of experience and professional discreet service. It's simple. We trim your weed and we do a damn good job. Visit drbuckcts.com to book your trimming what is the people advocating cannabis education radio network it's a network of people advocating cannabis education ctcp operates medicinal cannabis signing clinic if you want to grow your own medicinal cannabis and are located anywhere in canada then i'd like to suggest that you give them a call they can be reached at 1-613-967-9888 that's 1-613-967-9888 9888 and grow on with CTCP. Who has huge buds? You do. If you shop at BMA Hydroponics, attend one of BMA's educational seminars and learn the secrets of growing, harvesting, processing, and consuming quality cannabis and cannabis products. Learn how to make better extracts, edibles, and medicinal creams at prices you can afford. Visit BMA Hydroponics at 404 Maitland Drive, Belleville, or call 613-967-9888. The only way to go. We are people advocating cannabis education here at paceradio.net.